Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing H2O Innovation stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. H2O Innovation is a water and wastewater treatment company. The first of its three business units is Water Technology and Services. The second is specialty products and the third is O&M. The water technology and services unit provides custom built and integrated water treatment solutions for municipal, industrial and energy companies. It has installed more than 750 systems in North America. These systems include drinking water, wastewater, desalination, water reuse and much more. The second business unit is Specialty Products. This unit offers a complete line of specialty chemicals to treat water. It sells these chemicals in more than 75 countries. It has a product dedicated to maple syrup production to help companies increase syrup production while reducing energy consumption. The third business unit is O&M, which stands for Operation and Maintenance. It operates, maintains, and repairs water and wastewater treatment systems for all its clients and ensures that water quality meets regulatory requirements. The main goal of wastewater treatment is to protect humans and the ecosystem from harmful and toxic elements found in wastewater. It is designed to speed up the natural process of purifying water because the natural process is overloaded. Wastewater treatment removes solids from the water. This is known as effluent. As solid material decays, it uses up oxygen, which is needed by the plants and animals living in water. Every year, 3.6 million people die from water-related diseases. 844 million people lack access to safe drinking water. This is more than a combined population of the United States, Brazil, Japan, Germany, France, and Italy. The company is headquartered in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada and was founded in 1995. It started trading in 2007 and can be found on the TSX Venture, Pink Sheets, Euronex Paris, and Deutsche Börse. We're going to look at the ticker that trades on the TSX Venture, so all the numbers in this video are on Canadian dollars. The company also trades in the US on the Pink Sheets. The ticker is HEOFF. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 196 million market cap. They're trading at 230 a share and they have 85 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have negative free cash flow in 2018 but positive after that. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was positive for the first time in 2021. Revenue is a sales for the company and that goes up nicely each year. When you look at the different financial statements, pretty much all the numbers can be manipulated using accounting. The only number that you could 100% rely on is revenue. If you really understand gap accounting, then you can figure everything out. But it is possible a company can have positive net income and they had a bad year. It's also possible a company has negative net income, but they had a really good year. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. 87% of their revenue is recurring. That's a really good sign when you invest in a company that has recurring revenue. It's a more stable investment. Because if people are locked into a contract, it's kind of like guaranteed revenue in the future. Even if they're not locked in, it's just month to month, but it's auto renewed. A lot of people still continue that and they don't cancel. But when someone has to go out and actively purchase something, it's a lot less likely that person's going to spend money at your business. Companies like Netflix, also gyms, they have recurring revenues. Here's a breakdown of their 2020 and 2021 revenue broken down by business unit. Their smallest revenue is from water and technology services. Then specialty products, these are the chemicals that are sent around the world. Their biggest revenue generator is operation and maintenance. I really like to invest in companies that have recurring revenue and also do a lot of operations and maintenance. Companies that manufacture aircraft engines, sometimes they don't even make much money on selling the engine. Sometimes they lose money, it's a lost leader. They make the most money 
on maintaining those engines over the next 10, 20 years. And the more the plane flies, the more maintenance they need to do. When the company makes a custom built water treatment facility, that's WTS. That takes a lot of time to manufacture. They also have to do testing. Then they have to install it at the location of the company. So the margins aren't that high, but with operations and maintenance, it's really high margins because you're just paying an employee to go over there. You don't have to manufacture anything. Here's a breakdown of their revenue by country in 2020 and 2021. A majority of their revenue is in the US and Canada, but they're starting to get a lot of revenue from other countries. And I really like this business model because it's more scalable. They just have to ship the chemicals to these other countries. If a company in Saudi Arabia wanted to treat its water, all H2O does is send them the chemicals and instructions. And they're shipping to 75 countries. So the good thing about investing in companies that sell around the world is if one country is struggling, if there's a recession in one country, they still have other countries to focus on. Here's a breakdown of their annual revenue since 2008. So you can see the growth is really good for this company. They just started doing operations and maintenance in 2017. That was through an acquisition. That's a big reason their revenue is growing so much. If it wasn't for that, they'd be under $80 million today. Now they're almost double that. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. This includes cost of labor, the cost to manufacture the products, the cost of materials, depreciation, things like that. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. That peaked in 2021 at close to 40 million. Below that is their operating expenses, and then below that is operating income, which was negative in 2018, the highest in 2021. They do have a little bit of debt on their balance sheet, so they pay 2.3 million of interest on their debt. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was positive for the first time in 2021. And that should be growing a lot in the future as they scale their business. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates or loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So they are generating positive operating cash flow every year, except in 2018. So that looks really good. They do spend a little bit of CapEx each year, 1.2 million up to 2.7 million. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And that was positive every year, except 2018. And they're able to grow so much through acquisition. You can see in investing cash flow, they spent $25 million. That's where an acquisition goes. They acquired Genesis Membrane Products. They did another acquisition in 2019. That's why they added 13 million of stock in 2019 and 17 million in 2020 to fund those acquisitions. They also use debt to run their business, but they pay down a similar amount of debt as they issue. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 79 million of equity. They raised 120 million from selling their business and they lost 45 million from running their business. Now that they just started getting positive net income, I expect their retained earnings to become positive in a year or two. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 79 million of equity, 27 million of debt. They're 75% equity, 25% debt. Their net debt is 11 million and their weighted average cost of capital is 6.8%. The WAC on Simply Wall Street was 6.44%. On Finbox, it was 7.2%. So I just took the average of these two numbers. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 269 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $242 million. We divide that by 85 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 284. They're trading at 230, so they're trading at a 19% discount. It's a buy according to the model. The average analyst projects their revenue to grow 6.9%. I grew their revenue 6.9% each year for the next four years. And to calculate their future free cash flows, I needed to figure out what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. So I summed up these two free cash flow numbers, 17, and I divided by the sum of these two revenue numbers. That's 278. So 17 over 278. And that equals 11%. 
So I multiplied the future revenue estimates by 11%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. Simply Wall Street is really close to me. They're at 259 a share. They're saying the stock is 9.4% undervalued. Four analysts priced the stock that trades in the United States and their average price target was 248. The stock was trading at its highest in 2007 when it IPO'd. But then it came down right away after a few months. And since then, it's been pretty steady. There is ups and downs, but it's fairly flat over that 14 year time frame. They have a beta of 0.98, so the stock moves with the market. It's gone up 41% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P is up 27%. The 52-week low was a buck 58, the high was 370, and the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 100,000 shares are traded each day on this stock, and only 0.15% of the shares are shorted. Analysts are really bullish on this industry, projecting the industry earnings to grow 59%, the revenue to grow 28%. And the projection for this company is for their earnings to grow 34%, their revenue 7%. A bullish sign is when a company adds employees, so they've been adding a lot of employees each year, they're up to 700. The biggest shareholder is Investment Quebec at 11%. This fund was started to invest in companies that are based in Quebec. The second biggest shareholder is The Case. This is a pretty big pension fund. Then BDC Capital, then a director of the company, then Amundi, this is a French asset manager, the second biggest asset manager in Europe and top 10 in the world. Let's look at their financial ratios. They just started bringing in positive net income, so their PE isn't that great. When a company has negative net income or really small net income, price of sales is usually a better indicator. And they have a really good price of sales at 1.4, much better than the market median and average. Price to book is also good at 2.5. They do have a good amount of intangible assets on their balance sheet, 63 million. A company gets intangibles when they acquire other businesses. Their ROIC is a little low at 5%. They can cover their interest payments three times. Their ROE is also a bit low, mainly because they had their first positive net income in 2021. I'm sure it's going to get a lot better next year and the year after. They have a good current ratio and quick ratio. They have 15 million of cash on their balance sheet, 30 million of receivables. It does seem like the company is fairly well funded. They had positive 6 million of free cash flow in 2021 and 28 million of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So they have $34 million of funding. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 19% discount. When companies trade on the TSX Venture or the Pink Sheets, they don't get as much action as if they trade on the NASDAQ. So sometimes a company can be doing well financially, but just not a lot of people know about the stock. Sometimes companies can be doing really poorly, but for some reason, lots of people tweet about it and buy the stock. It just may take a little more time for the investing community to know about this company, but they seem to be doing really well and they have a really good business model. I like the fact that they have a lot of recurring revenue and the business is scalable. So I think this could be a really good long-term stock. I ranked their free cash flows four out of 10, their revenue six out of 10, and their ratios five out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.